has to understand the importance of emotion. Um, there has been a transformation in psychology which was once interested in behavior, then in cognition, and right now we are going through what has been termed an emotional revolution. Emotion is now at the heart of, uh, of most clinical theories and of also at a, of a lot of scientific research. Uh, it's at the heart of understanding early development, early emotional development. It's at the understanding of all forms of psychopathology, which I'll talk about in a second. And also, emotion is at the heart of all forms of psychotherapeutic change, whatever the therapy model here. Um, the, the understanding now is the fundamental nature of emotions in all human interactions. Emotions tell us what is meaningful, what is important. There are also the integration of the mind and the body because emotions, by definition, psychobiological, the body's reaction, etc. Emotions are also at the heart of how we perceive something as being meaningful. Something is meaningful because an emotional response within us marks that. The body is marking that. So that being the case, uh, emotional development is even earlier than cognitive and intellectual development. This essentially is the way that our bodies react to stressors in the environment. Now, there are also cognitive pieces to these emotions, uh, but essentially um, we're looking at um, a fundamental reaction of the brain-mind-body to changes in the environment, to changes that are either, either uh, stressful or non-stressful. That being the case, emotions can either be positive or negative, but essentially these are adaptive reactions. And again, when they are out of bounds, when they are highly dysregulated, they lose an adaptive function and they interfere with behavior rather than uh, facilitate behavior. That being the case, let me just say that the idea that negative emotions are bad and positive emotions are good is not true. It is important for us to be able to learn how to cope with stress and the ability to experience a negative emotion such as fear or shame is extremely adaptive. It's, it's part of what tells us to move away from organisms. It's part of also moral development. So I just wanted to point out it's not so much positives are good and negative or bad as the difference between regulated and dysregulated. And when you're talking about dysregulation, you're talking about intensity of emotion, either extremely highly intense or very low in intensity, these are the ones that are problematic. Very low intensity in depression and loss, etc. Very high intensity in, let's say, terror. The capacity for emotions clearly is important for survival skills and for the adaptive capacity of all human beings. We're now realizing that even more than the ability to rationally, logically think through life, it's these emotional intuitions, it's the emotional uh, capacities that really are the key that allow us to move through the world and to interact with other human beings because essentially we are doing more than just um, communicating with each other by language. We're also communicating with each other non-verbally through these emotional communications, through face, gesture, tone of voice. These are always going on underneath the language, and these are more critical, actually, for our ability to make contact with other human beings. Someone is always looking to someone else to regulate their state, but cannot auto-regulate their state is problematic. And then in the most serious disorders, you have someone when they're under stress who can neither auto-regulate their own stress nor interactively regulate stress. And now we're looking at severe problems of chronic stress. Chronic stress essentially is stress dysregulation. But I want to point out again, the major way that human beings regulate these states, regulate our own internal homeostasis, regulate our body states, is by connecting with other human beings. The ability to have, to be able to regulate one's own me mental states as the environment changes, uh, because the truth of it is that the relationships that we have um, are always continuously changing. There are times when we're feeling more connected to people. There are times when they're more disconnected to people. There are times when there are stress that we have to deal with. There are times when there are losses. There are times when we, you know, when we're sharing joy states, etc. So the ability to feel in the body, joy, excitement, fear, 
shame, etc. All of these are adaptive. And then the capacity to shift back and forth with these states as the social environment changes is really key to this. Darwin said that essentially what is adaptive to survival is not intelligence and it's not aggression. It's the ability to cope with change. And again, that flexibility, that resilience to be able to shift emotions depending upon the social context is the key. Someone who is trapped into a depressive state, a long-term mood, etc., and unable to kind of move out of that state uh, and to shift down into comfort, etc., or into joy states is problematic. And these are chronic, enduring negative states, etc. So we now see that resilience is this ability to fluidly shift, more or less fluidly, fluidly shift back and forth between the emotional state that is needed in a particular context.